For three plus years, the H2118A has been the gold standard in the chip realm. Well, not anymore. Introducing the Kaiweeds HT118E. And the E stands for Epic. After watching this review, I haven't convinced you that this is the best new cheapo on the block. I'll eat my shirt, but I prefer not to because it looks really cool. A massive shout out, a big thanks to Kaiweets for sending in the HT-118E for this review. We are one of the lucky few to get a first edition of this multimeter. It's not officially out till the end of December. Gorgeous looking as always, the Kaiweets has that uh, undeniably uh, attractive multimeter look. If we put it up against that uh, Habitest HT-118A, you can see visually they are basically one and the same. Biggest giveaway that you know you've got a new multimeter is the fact that that 20,000 counts is prominently displayed on that selector switch. Oh yeah, 20,000 counts, a huge upgrade from the 6,000 count Habitest. I think ergonomically the uh, HT118 series has a very, very nice combination of, uh, you know, modern plus functionality all in one. Uh, I think it's just generally a really good looking multimeter. 118E ships in this Kaiweets box. As always, great shipping from Kaiweets. Black and red really stands out from the bunch. Not that generic looking box we're used to. Now this, with the 118, you are now getting a case. That's right, a case for your precious getting Kaiweets. Your test leads, your AA batteries, and as well, your Kaiweets user manual. True RMS model HD 118E. Oh man, this is... Oh, this is exciting. This is exciting. Spec wise, here you go. Cat 3, 1000 volts. Cat 4, 600 volts. 20,000 counts. True RMS. Maximum voltage. DC 1000 volts. AC 700. And test leads have a really nice size. Full size for a full size multimeter. Cat 4, 600 volts. Um, has that nice little safety shroud at the tip, as long as some uh, holders there for getting a good grip. All in all, really. You know, for me, perfect at least in terms of a test lead. Of course, you can take off the cap, lose a cat, but gain better access to whatever it is you're probing. Uh, they are not silicone, standard PVC, um, but that being said, they do feel really nice. Got a lot of good stress relief here as well on the end. Good job. Nice, solid, snug fit with the shroud into that input jack. Yeah, it ain't going anywhere. This week's shout out goes to Switzerland. Grüezi. Thanks for watching. Tilt stand, standing bail, whatever you want to call it, identical to its predecessor. Um, easy come, easy go, easy flip in action. Uh, this thing holds that meter nice and firm on any surface. Excellent job. Also get a thermal couple attachment because of course the Kaiweets does do temperature with that big gorgeous dual display which we'll look at in just a minute. Finally you get your AA batteries and you are good to Wow, an HD-118E, and like I said before, man, this thing is an improvement. Uh, yeah, it does look the same, but you know, that's where it ends. This has a lot more functionality, just does things better. It ain't perfect, but it is perfectly improved. Does that even make sense? One of the biggest pet peeves I had with the previous incarnation of the HD-118A was the fact that when you turned it on, yeah, defaulted to AC volts. Well, that's okay if you're an electrician, but for Bench Electronics, it's no good. Now with the HT-118E, turn it on. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bang. DC volts. Hmm, thank you. Thank you very much. Of course, another stellar improvement is the fact that you have a backlight. On both units, let's invoke it first with the older 118A. Backlight is on. There we go. And as you can see, it's not bad. It's nice, it's even, it's uniform. There's very little bleeding, perhaps a touch on the right hand side, but generally speaking, it's a pretty nice looking, oh my goodness, the light went off. Yeah, 
like that was the pet peeve, right? Nice, gorgeous looking backlight on that 118A, but it just didn't last. Welcome to the new 118E. Turning on that backlight, uniform, no bleeding at all. And uh, we have a slightly more contrasty blue hue going on here. And I think it works even better than the previous 118A. And the best part, the best part, the light stays on. That's right. On the 118E, that backlight will stay on permanently until you decide to turn it off. Oh yes, they listened. They listened. Let's take a closer look at the selector switch, starting with the off position. Volts AC-DC plus frequency, defaulting to DC volts. Millivolts AC-DC plus frequency. Frequency and duty cycle. Resistance, continuity and diode. Capacitance. Dual temperature, Celsius and Fahrenheit. Microamps, AC-DC. Milliamps, AC-DC. High current amps, AC-DC plus frequency. Finally, non-contact voltage and live. To top of the meter, we have our function. One touch hold, max min, and the backlight slash flash. And one of the really nice features of the 118A series was the fact that you had those illuminated input jacks telling you exactly where those inputs need to go. High current 10 amp input on the top. Below that we have the milliamp input with a maximum of 200 milliamps. Right hand side we have our capacitance, diode, continuity, voltage, resistance, frequency, duty cycle, live, and temperature. Finally below that we have our common or ground. And of course 20,000 counts much improved over the previous 118A. You know, I like that clickety click clackety clack and no worries here with the 118A. Hits those ranges once again with authority, has a very nice tactile feel to it. Don't have to worry about getting stuck between ranges. This is a very nice selector switch. The nitty gritty of DC precision testing. And here we are. Um, I'm gonna test them both just for the fun of it. Starting off with the new HT118E, 9.999 volts on a 10.000, pretty darn good. Let's try the older habit test. See how it fares. And coming up with less resolution, of course, 9.98 volts. Still, meter. yeah, close. compared to that Fluke 27, not so big, but hey, it holds its own against the Fluke, and this is a beast. Um, Pretty well the same size as that Zotac and uh, much bigger than the little Anning. So all in all, good size multimeter. Um, it's not massive, but it's definitely on the larger side. Da -da 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 -da. Got that low current accuracy sitting at 4.5 milliamps, coming in as 4.49. Up to 7.3, 7.3 spot on. 9.4, 9.41, 11 11.1, 11.1. I'm gonna max it out now to 20 milliamps. Right on the money, 20 milliamps. And there you go, 20.08 milliamps. So whoa, good stuff, HT118E. Presently sitting at around 900 milliamps, and we're gonna check the high current amps. Uh, here we go. Bringing it up, and as soon as we hit one amp, we have that nice visual high current alert. You can see that screen has gone amber. Um, oh, very, very nice. Now we're not getting an audible alarm, strictly visual. Uh, let's take it up even more. And here we go. Now we're getting the audible alarm kicking in at the 10 amp marker. So after you hit 10 amps, uh, DC or AC for that matter, high current, you're going to get that high current alarm, uh, the audible sound as well. Quick DC showdown. We've got the Samoa PC7000 up against the Kaiweets 118E, sitting at 8.47 volts. Let us bring it up. 15.37 volts. 15.35 for the the Kaiweets 15.36 for the Sanwa. Up, up, and again, 17.99, according to the Kaiweets power supply, 17.97 and 17.97 respectively. Oh yeah, it's a close one. 21.12 volts, 
21.07 and 21.09 for the Sanwa. Let's max it out now. 30.96 volts. Kyrie's H2118, 30.90. And the Sanwa, identical, well, almost 30.932 or three. Wow, man, look at that. A, a cheapo. $35, $45 meter compared to a $300, $400 meter. You gotta love it. So Sanwa has that amazing resolution, but uh, generally speaking, that Kaiwitz uh, stand up job. Uh, check out the bar graphs as well. They both have that uh, bar graph display at the bottom. Um, let's just move it around a bit, compare the two. Why don't we? So you can see on the Sanwa, much easier to read. Uh, obviously more verbose. Uh, on the Kaiweets, because of the voltage, what have you, uh, not quite as precise per se. Um, it'll definitely come in handy uh, depending on some applications, but not nearly as usable as the Sanwa. Ready, Aphrodite, it is continuity time. The brand new HT118E stock default test leads. They haven't been sanded. These are stra straight out of the plastic. Three, two, one. Oh yeah. Now, you know, you can see it misses that every other tap, but when it does make contact, it's fast, it's latched, it's fairly loud. Let's try the Pro Masters. Pro Masters, wow, hundreds of multimeters later, these things are still kicking. Three, two, one. Oh yeah. Latched and loud, doesn't miss a beat with the Pro Masters. Beauty. Seventy-one point five decibels, maximum output volume in continuity. Now we're going to look at diodes and light emitting diodes. Start off with a standard diode over here on this power board from an LCD TV, and let's see if we have a voltage drop. And there we go. Looking good. Now we'll try a standard LED. There we are. Ford voltage drop as well as illumination. Same thing with the yellow. The green illuminated, but no forward indicator. The blue illuminated and the white illuminated. So five out of five in terms of illumination, two out of five in terms of giving us that forward voltage drop. Output voltage in diode mode, 3.2 volts. Now, if we try the older 118A, we have uh, illumination and a forward voltage drop for all of the five LEDs. Oh, what happened, 118E? Ugh. Look at that absolutely gorgeous dual display. Right now we're in temperature mode. We have Celsius as well as Fahrenheit at the top, 67 degrees in the studio. But man, it is such a nice dual display. Boy, 118E, I love it. Have a precision resistor inserted into the inputs right now. 102.3 ohm, 102.5. Okay, let's check out that 0.5 ohm now, shall we? And 0.5 ohm coming up, 0.54, beauty. We're gonna look at the speed now, ranging speed and resistance starting off at one mega ohm, up to three mega ohm, looking good, six mega ohm, 10 mega ohm, no worries. Okay, now looking at 100K, 300K, 600K, finally one mega ohm, oh yeah, 20K, 60K, 90K, and 100K, looking good. This is telling us that we have a 20 millifarad, 20,000 microfarad uh, limit on capacitance testing. Here we've got a 10 millifarad capacitor coming in as 9.6 uh, millifarad. Yeah, I did try the 47, uh, no can do. So 20 millifarad, that is the max. And once again, with the previous version, uh, 118A, this is 100 millifarad. Look at that, no problems getting there. Gain so access to that battery housing, one Phillips screw. Look at that nice brass threaded insert, powered by two AA batteries. Unfortunately, we have no easy fuse access. Now to get to fuses, you're gonna have to open up the entire back. Ugh. 
Teardown time, starting off with, well, a close look at each of them. You can see they are basically identical in terms of the PCB. Now there is some, some slight variance on uh, the theme, but generally speaking, yeah, very similar. They both have those six by 30 ceramic fuses, 250 volts, 10 amp on the high current, and uh, 500 milliamp on the 118, 200 milliamp on the 118E. Input jacks for the split variety type, as you can see. Um, over here, we have two PTCs on each of the units uh, in terms of input protection, no OVs to speak of whatsoever. So uh, same input protection dial clamp. The older 118A version 1.2. Here we have the, actually it's over here, 118E version 1.0. Some subtle changes here on the PCB. LCD display driver has been changed from the whole tech to the Titan Micro LCD driver, the TM1621B. And the main IC copped on the 118A is not copped here, but it's still whitewashed, so we don't know what it is. But, uh, well, over here we have our EEP ROM, and it is the identical EEP ROM to the 118A. That is the T24C02. Lots of memory programming goodness over there. NCV on both units is that standard uh, nickel style filament protruding uh, from the top of the multimeter. And here we have the white LED for the flashlight, of course, the buzzer speaker right beside it. Um, as well, we have a four megahertz crystal on each of the units. Okay. Bottom meter as well, you notice we have current sensing resistors on both of the uh, models, 118E and the 118A. So no current shunt, current sensing resistor. And opposite side of the PCB, here are those rotary selector tracks. We have some nice dielectric here, some nice grease going on on those rotary tracks. Once again, a nice attention to detail here, good blobs of solder on those inputs. No other input protection, no mods or anything hiding on this side of the board. Of course, here is the main display and we have that zebra strip Daniel all in that one module. So nice and clean. Uh, that is also slightly improved from the 118. And of course, on the opposite side, no shielding. Oh, hi. And of course, here are those rotary pads. One, two, three, four, five, six pads. A couple of balls underneath. Good old fashioned ball and spring rotary selector switch. Always has that great tactile feedback. Already gonna put it back together. Come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts of the Kiwi's HD-118E. Just get it. Man, this thing is one joy of a multimeter to behold. It's incredibly versatile, exquisite design, and man, is it well made. That gorgeous dual display with the always on backlight. Oh, what's not to like? Definitely more accurate than the previous version. And man, oh man, it defaults to DC volts now the way it should be. No, the 118A rocks and it still does. It still has some slightly better improvements. A capacitance and diode just seems to be a little bit better for whatever reason on the 118A. But I think with a few programming tweaks, maybe a firmware upgrade, what have you, I think the Kiwi's 118A will be just as good. No, that 20,000 count display alone makes it a worthwhile upgrade. I mean, a 20,000 count cheapo, whoa! Let's not forget, this is the first of the 118Es to come out. Basically, it was still a prototype, so I'm hoping a few more tweaks and it will be where it's supposed to be. Yeah, this is one awesome multimeter. Uh, you know I'm excited. You know what? You should be too. Oh, Kaiwis, you came so close to five stars, but close it is. The Kaiwis HD-118E gets a solid 4.5 out of five stars. Hey, that's nothing to sneeze about. Congrats! And you know what? This multimedia truly is epic. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one. Keep on testing. Quick DC testing here. Sanwa PC7000. First thing, the salala. Quick DC. Top of the meter, we have our function selector. One touch hold, max min, and finally the black light flash slash. Uh. NCV by, oh man.